Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, today is June thirtieth, <clears throat> Friday, twenty twenty three. Um, we haven't had a recap in a couple of weeks. Um, it's pretty much been lasagna cat. <clears throat> um, just trading, trading his two setups and fine tuning his rules, fine tuning his strategy, and his setup just so you can get more laser and more consistent. Um, and that's what you want to do is you want to try to keep building on your strategy or your setup, whatever your setup is. If it's fibs, you know, you can always um, ask fib questions on the mentor or on the mentorship when Brandon is on. Um, he's He's really good with fibs. And as you can see, he's given us a couple other elite level FIB lessons. Um, but yeah, ask those questions if you're a FIB player, because they can only get better. And if you're not a FIB player, then try to learn it, because um, FIBs actually help you out a lot. Um, I call them the training wheels of uh, trading, because it helps you wait for that confirmation every almost every trader stresses and emphasizes um uh, wait for that confirmation wait for that confirmation and sometimes when you're a new trader you get the fomo and you 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 get emotional and then you you, you feel like you're gonna miss the boat but trust me just be patient there will always be an, an another setup either for continuation or a reversal play. Um, but that all comes with time. Don't try to learn all those all those types of plays right out the gate. Just pick up on a setup that helps you, helps you um, uh, see price action or see a play setup, see a pattern setup. Um, Whatever helps you hone in on that on that setup and then fine tune it and then add to it. You can always add another setup if you're not finding trades. Um, um, yeah, let's, so we're just gonna recap how how we did it for the last ten weeks. Um, Yeah. So um, the first week we started out with mindset. Remember that lasagna cat? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We discussed uh, we discussed Mark Douglas trading in the zone, and um, you know how trader psychology is counterintuitive towards a uh, regular person psychology. Do you feel that 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 was helpful, like being able to tell it, what the mind the correct mindset should be? Because I felt. When I was always, I was still trading in the regular person mindset, and I felt that I was forcing trades. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, it's uh, the acceptance of risk, and also like the the, the acceptance of uncertainty, because it's like living in uncertainty is like what normal people try to avoid, and like it's in the DNA of a trader as well. It's like it's just part of human wiring for survival. So it's like humans love sure things you know even if it's like yeah watch this tv show every wednesday you know it's always going to be on and shit and like you you want to and like so like or like having a normal nine to five job or, or like regular job like we all have like i've got a job and i know they're going to pay me a certain amount it's predictable but so with trading though it's it's what it is is you need to develop the the the, the probabilistic mindset um not a sure thing like even if you have an amazing setup that you rely on to win most of the time it's probabilistic it's not a certainty like we're not looking for 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 sure things so it holds a lot of traders back is being inhibited because they're like i don't know if this is a sure thing or not well it's not you know it's 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 when you have a setup that works it's 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 a probability that'll work out so that's different from a normal person mindset you know uh, especially where money is concerned you know the risk of money the other thing that i really gain from is uh um uh you know don't trade anything that you're willing to lose um and in this case it's a certain amount of money 
And so we posted last week um, an old video of Connor's that talks about this. Great video. It's in the futures chat. It's just a few posts up from the bottom. Awesome video. And the beginning of it is really funny. It's really funny. And it just shows the relief that you get, especially when you're building your abilities to really understand what you're willing to lose per trade and how that affects your mindset. And like thirdly, just having a very secure, not secure, probabilistically reliable, uh, what you call it, um, setup really helps your mindset and walking yourself through the trade. Uh, but yeah, that first week talking about that was very beneficial. Because it uh, helps with your your behavior, right? I remember you like started to become more more cool, calm, and collected about your trades instead of jumping in your trade and being nervous that it was going to yeah. go the wrong way or you would just cut it off short because you didn't know it, if it was going to go hit your target or not. Yeah, because like where the rubber really meets the road is that like when you have a um a, a setup that you're um that you're gaining comfort with, you can really spot where your stop out is going to be, and you can set it. Now, in, in my recaps, uh, even up until this week, there's some stop outs that I did get um that I stopped out way too way too low on. Uh, I don't yeah. know about way too low, but but too low on. Um, it didn't rattle me though because I knew what I had to do to get to get it tighter. You know what I mean? And then like that, it, it it's a work in progress. Um, yeah. But with that trade plan, you can really gauge what, you know, where, what you're willing to risk is on the chart, mm -hmm. you know, your entry versus what you're willing to risk. Yeah. And so when you have that setup, that's becoming reliable or is reliable in a probabilistic sense. And you're able to map out where, you need to stop to lose what you're okay with losing that gives you a lot of confidence because then you're trading you're accepting the risk the, the the existence of risk you're you're making probabilistic decisions and you know that you're not will uh, uh losing anything that you're not willing to lose mm -hmm. so that that creates a lot of confidence especially if you pair it up with a thing that we got into or that i got into just a few years ago uh, years ago a few weeks ago that semper was uh was showing me was to talk yourself through the price action through your trade uh, it, it's huge confidence boost but as far as the first week goes that's some of the stuff that i gleaned during the first week talking about mindset and stuff and it's really good and um yeah and, and uh 10k scovos just said uh that he uh you know, watch that video. It's a really yeah. funny video. Everyone should watch it. It's a great video. It, yeah, it, it is. It's funny and it drives the point home really well. Mm -hmm. Cause because you're risking money that that you need. Like if you need to make a if you need to make a rent payment, then you shouldn't be trading. Go sim trade. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go put your 25 bucks, 50 bucks a month into your trading account until you're able to trade. Don't force trading until you're able to trade. I know some trading guys out there will say, well, start trading live right away so you can get the emotional part of it down, um, which I think it, it is true in a sense, but actually practicing your setup so you know what to do in, in, before you start risking money, I think you should know what a play looks like. You know what I'm saying? before uh yeah but <laughs> yeah man, that's funny uh he's there but baby need a new pair of shoes let's roll the dice yeah you don't want to be that way you you want to know what your play is like everybody what every guru out there has in common is have a trade plan yeah. And where you're like, well, how do I create a trade plan? Everyone has a different way of creating their trade plan. Yeah. Um, but that leads us up into second into the second week where learning your setup will give you that trade plan. Yeah. And in the second week, we led uh Lasagna Cat. He's been with the elites for a while and he's had he's had a hit and miss with certain strategies that the elites have. And he was drawn to one, and yeah. which was what? Um, you mind telling us how your strategy is? That actually leads us to this uh, this screenshot that I have here. Um, I I show this screenshot at the beginning of every recap for the week. This is um so on the on the second week of uh, finding your way, 
uh semper asked me so like what's the setup that you're that you're kind of comfortable with most comfortable with that you've seen that like is is fairly reliable or you've seen play out and i was like well it, it's um a dump out here's an obvious big dump out to a higher low and then another higher low entry uh dictated by uh, a fib drawn out from uh a high to that new low it, it, in this iteration of the setup and this is really the best type of iteration of the setup it's a new low, dump out to new low. Then you see uh, RSI over overcool recover. Um, over here, I got my Mac uh, MACD. MACD is um, agreeing with that RSI. Uh, do do support, and it plays out like this. And use ideally a fit target or uh, or um, a moving average target. And if they line up together, all the better. So I identified that uh, at the second week, and then set out to trade that setup and only that setup um some variations came in in in, in the weeks after but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that as well yeah great did did you figure that it helped you just focus on one setup help you it, learn it, price action better it helped me focus because like um for one thing, it allowed me to really relax during the part of the day where the setup wasn't apparent. So instead of me, um, where's the open? Yeah, the open's back here. Instead of me like watching all this price action, being like, "Where's the money? Where's the money? Like, where's the money? I'm, 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 I'm missing. Like, where? Where's the FOMO?" Instead of that, it it, it gives me cool, calm, and collected uh, blocks of time during the trading day. You know, where I'm not thinking about that mess what it does is it gives you time to think about your rules so like it, uh, starting from the second week and going on was like me defining my rules and tightening them up over the next few weeks this this second week I didn't really have my rules in place that much except I, I knew what I more or less looked for but hadn't yet applied it to like rules and rules in the proper format it gets you focused because you're starting to form an idea of what you're looking for. And you get to relax here when you haven't found it. And by the way, this is just me talking about my setup. Everyone's got, you know, their own, their own ideas of what's what, what's good to trade for themselves. But like, uh, blah, 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 blah. and then you notice, right, that like, or I noticed that when opportunities start to present itself, that's when my chest would start tightening up. And I'd be like, oh, shit, those feelings are still there. And they still are to this day. But I'm learning new techniques. Um to um uh, minimize those but yeah um it, you save a lot of mental and emotional capital waiting for your setup mm -hmm. you know very important for the trading day is the mental and emotional capital you have coming into the day and it allows you to focus when you start seeing your opportunity it's really good exactly you you, you practice that patience the patience yeah. of your setup setting up you don't get in just because Oh, uh, you see somebody in the chat freaking, you know, hitting a home run. Yeah. You trade your setup. You don't let that, let that chat room just be white noise. You know, even with Brandon or with Connor, whoever, even with me, if you're, if we're spouting something out and you're seeing something that, that we can't see. If you're a short player, you're obviously going to see a short play before I see it because I'm a long player. And if you see that, maybe you can warn me, you know, let's work as a team. Like, hey, I, I see this short. So it's not like we're going to critique you if you throw out your play because you see something that that I don't see. We might say, hey, be I might tell you if you're going short, I say, hey, be careful with the 666 or be careful with the 200. There might be a bounce right there or, you know, you might want to use that as your target. So you can work together, even though I'm not in the play and you're in the sh in, in their short. We could kind of guide each other to like, hey, this might be a good a good target to to get out. Yep. Um, but that leads us to uh, week three, where we're, I believe you're taking bigger losses when you're first figuring out your setup. You're probably like, oh shit, I took like a. 10 point red or whatever right and that's one of the biggest thing is hey when do i stop out that was one of my biggest issues was bag holding like i said i blew up 
my three accounts on the Friday because I bag held all the way. Like I said, oh, it'll pop up for power hour. Uh, like, fuck, I'm like down 300, you know, 400. And then when I had more money, it was like three grand. I was like, shit, I should have just stopped out. Why am I, why am I holding $3,000 red? And that's all in the psychology, which you hate to be wrong. As a man, sometimes it's a little bit tougher. It might be easier for women to let go. I'm not 100% sure if anybody wants to chime in on that part. But yeah, I feel that I, I hate to be wrong. You know, like they, we, the saying goes that men hate to be wrong. And it was true to a one point. And then I was like, fuck this. I'm not bag holding. And yeah. then you start to create rules. You start to create rules to be like, hey, this is going to be my stop out. And you can, and as you can see uh, last week or this, this following, this previous week that we traded Lasagna Cat, I showed you how you can adapt different stop losses to, yeah. to different strategies, kind of mm -hmm. mix them. Yeah. So instead of like the break of the 50, you want you want to wait the break of the 50 SMA or whatever, you know, something yeah. that you think um, is a, a is a strong that might be a stronger support. Yeah. Um, but you have to have a stop loss defined either mentally, either either a fishing order like, hey, mm -hmm. this fishing orders, if you're a newbie, that might be the best idea. Because I've shown this week I showed Lasagna Cat and Kyle like, hey, you can stop out and reset right away. Like reset in five minutes. Like, hey, let me, okay. It, I was trying to go short, but obviously it's not short. It's going back long. Let me get back in long. Yeah. So you kind of adapt to the flow of price action. Yeah. I have a, I have one reset this from this week's recap where like I I stopped out because it hit my stop, but also I realized it wasn't a good entry for my my setup. And then like on the very next candle confirmed that it was funny enough. And so I just hopped back in again. And on that particular trade, it was like a two and a half point loss. And then I cranked out like four, four points or four and a half on the first contract, then seven something on the second one. Um, and it was... It was a cool headed moment and I was just at that point and it, like it felt good. I'm not saying I was at that point all week, but it, it comes together in bits and pieces. And I think as you keep repeating that process, you're going to start more comfortable with that play. You're going to be like, shit, this is like, you know, taking candy from a baby. Yeah. And you're just gonna be comfortable. You you know your setup. You know how your candles set up into your setup, yeah. into your into your zone or into your level. You you start to see that, and that helps. But creating rules, which the first couple, the first week of rules were trading rules. Like if you wake up, if you wake up and on the wrong side of the bed you're not going to trade or if you're not clear-minded if you're hungover or if you're sick you know those are those kind of trading rules uh with a little bit of hey i'm not gonna take a trade until i see this and that was one of the major things that i believe you you uh keyed on the following week was that we developed the rules asking yourself questions yeah or or walking yourself through the trade yeah yeah absolutely yeah that was that was huge um and that came about actually semper because you posted you, you you talked about rules one week and you showed you showed like a, a screenshot of your rules written down and you had them you had your rules as questions you know like say like a rule is like I must wait for the 50 50 cross I'm not saying that that definitely is but just as an yeah. example uh -huh. like like rule, rule number what rule number four wait for the 50 50 cross but instead the way you did it was rule number four has the has the 50 50 crossed that's a question is there a 50 50 cross that's a question and um i've got like a whole document of rules that i've like since uh written up which is like 
which has them all all posed as questions and written into a, a narrative, which I think really helps because the questions form the narrative, um, you know, because you ask yourself throughout price action and throughout the trade, uh, when is data being released? Is there proper MA stacking? There must be proper stacking for reversal or long. Was there a big dump? Um, <laughs> big dump. Um, how, how do MAs look? Um, and then I go, what do I see? What do I want to see? Because that's like the, the overarching question and narrative. What do I see? What do I want to see? Is price action at major support? What do I see? What would I like to see? What does RSI look like? These are three variations of RSI activity that I look for. So it's like, what does RSI look like? And that could be a little vague. Well, it looks like this. It looks like that. But he's, here are bullet points on the three acceptable things. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's good, you know? And then, uh, so you walk yourself through this and it's your rules. This is sort of where the rubber meets the road as far as what we were talking about before, um, about how talking yourself through price action is going to be so beneficial that's at least my version of it and like yeah definitely that's awesome because yeah. i i know that like brandon said this morning was walking yourself or, narr or narrating the trade is like leaving no doubt yeah your eye, you're speaking what your eyes see be to your brain you know so your brain can make it's like inputting something into chat gpt and it's going to spit out something that's why you're that's what you're doing to your brain. You're loading it up like, hey, I'm seeing this and I've seen this before and this is not what I don't, yeah. this is something that I don't like yeah, because, exactly. because it dumped on me, right? And I think after this week or after the week three, you started to uh, like keep your red smaller and your green started to grow. Yeah. Um, um yeah, for sure. It, that comes from tightening up your rules and then also getting a stop loss rule. Because I, I was like, wait a minute, I realized I don't have any rules for stopping out. And so I adopted, and again, to this day, you know, uh, like a month and a half later, I'm still not perfect at this and you'll see that. But like um, in terms of a moving average, uh, a higher low play, it could be a stop out underneath the, the 23. Well, uh, fib and what I found is sometimes that's a little bit too large and it makes me a little bit nervous and indecisive it's like let's say my rule is the 23 fib then I'll be like oh but wait let me see if it closes below and shoots back up again like I don't want to get shook out so like even though you have that rule you got to sort of like manage those tinier demons yep. uh, Semper recently showed me a technique for making entries that are much more confirmed and that have tighter stops um and again I'm still honing those but I'm able to keep those in mind and it's, it's gonna, I'm, what's the word? Like osmosis. I'm, I'm like, I'm like a, a little amoeba allowing these things to come into my, my little personal ecosystem and absorb them into my trading minds. It doesn't happen automatically, but it happens. You just got to keep on top of it. But we've pointed out, you know, like what to look for. So you can look for that, right. Where you create a pullback low and yep. then, you know, break the body, break one tick above. Yeah. Um, so, instead yeah. of coming down to it. But like I said earlier, if it's a big confluence of level supports, like let's say it's a weekly support, but it's also like a standard dev support or a moving average support where there's a bunch of different supports lining up, mm -hmm. then maybe still take a, a fishing order trade there. Yeah. But that's totally up to the person because everybody looks at the chart a different way. Even yeah. though we see the same thing, your feelings and your emotions and the way your eyes pick up the chart, everybody has everybody has a different way of picking that up. And you're going to develop it. Eventually, we'll all be like Brandon, right? Where we can be like, oh, the next candle, we should get a squeeze. If not, then it might, you know, dump. Yep. We're yeah. all going to get there, but if that takes with time. He's been trading for 10 years plus. Yeah. You know, I've barely been at five yeah. just looking at charts. We're going to get there. It takes time. This is not a doctor doesn't become a doctor overnight. Yeah. It's you know, it, this is a, if you're going to take it as like, hey, I want to be able to quit my job, then, hey, you got to get trained up. 
You got yeah. I got to I had to go to school to be a network engineer. You know, you had to go to school to be whatever you got to be. Or even an apprentice if you're being in the labor side, you know, iron workers, all that stuff. They had to put their time in, their 4 years in before they became professionals. Yeah. And also, that goes with trading. Go yeah. ahead. I th I think the thing a lot of people realize too is that like you have to also go to the right school and um I, I was uh, I was attracted to BRT because Connor really seemed to have his head together and be more down to earth than the dudes who used to pop up on YouTube and be like, "Dude, like, like make your fucking dreams come true." Trading for a year, just like, yeah, get the fuck out of my face. In fact, I got YouTube Premium without ads just so I wouldn't fucking see those guys anymore. Yeah. Um, and so Connor was more like, "Yeah, we all teach, you know, basically the same stuff. So just get on board with us, you know, because we're <laughs> we're not bullshitting you." And yeah. then when Brandon showed up, I was like, wow, this dude's got a very relatable personality and a very like just like relatable. And it made it made sense to me in my personality. And it's like, uh, yeah, go to go to the right school. <laughs> yeah, definitely. With the positive mindset that Brandon brings, you know, yeah. that and just being around like minded per people that all want to have or all have the same goal. You know, yeah. hey, I see Semper doing, you know, a thousand dollar trade. I want to get to that level. You know, I, I was posting trades when I was making ten dollars a trade. Like, hey, I had a ten dollar trade. Yeah. You know, when I first started trading futures live, you know, I was posting ten dollar wins, twenty five dollar wins. But I slowly built that up. And that's what you guys got to do. You're not going to come in here overnight. Yeah, you could be a day trader in 30 days, but I don't think you can quit your job in 30 days um, because you just got to develop that eye or that brain development for your play, whatever that play is. Yeah, uh, And that's what I like. That's another thing I like about BRT is they provide so many new tools. And even if there's a tool that you use and you ask them like, Hey, have you used this tool or whatever? Sometimes even me, I'll start looking into that tool. Like that's what happened with the fib. I, I never used the fib, but I seen it. I seen it and it appealed to me because I call it the training wheels of trading where now I don't need the, I don't need the fib. I can just go off of the moving average or, um, rsi macd play you know that's what i can do now but before i needed the fib to be able to see that pullback because it helped me with confirmation that was one of the biggest issues was was the confirmation i would always fomo i would always FOMO. i was like damn there's something that i'm doing wrong so then i just started like man i'm just gonna start doing what brandon is doing you know so I started kind of calling out the plays to myself and I noticed that my eyes opened up to price action. I was like, oh shit. Okay. Uh, like for instance, like I, I see a signal, like, like let's see, I see the RSI over cool. Right. And then come back to come back. Like right here, the RSI is over cool. So now you tell yourself when RSI is like right here, because you want to try to predict and walk yourself ahead. It's like playing chess. Chess, the, the masters are like five, ten moves ahead already. You know, you want to get ahead of the market. And the RSI is one of the things that could kind of signal um, either TTM or MACD. But usually MACD is like the second confirmation signal for uh, for price action move. So like if I start seeing it price action right here in the middle, I would want to see it. I would tell myself, okay, I want to see it over cool now because obviously if it's in the middle, look where price action is. You, are you going to get in right there? If you're going to try to catch a falling knife, yeah, you would get in right there. Um, or you, if you're a, a, a zone or a, a price action trader, you would – you know, because of this little square, you would have, you know, that. So you kind of came back and retested it. It broke with this candle, came back and retested it. So you probably could have got in right there if you're that type of trader. Um, but 
you wouldn't get in right there in my play because I don't I don't follow that. I know how to trade it, but I that's not my setup. I don't feel comfortable trading it. So don't try to force a strategy either. If you don't like it, then maybe jump on to another one. But if you even if you gravitate to it and you're not having success, go on YouTube and figure out other ways how other people use that same tool. You might you might see it work better for you if you do it. Like if you don't know how to fib and you're like, man, well, Brandon always fibs a candle that has a, a, a contact with the moving average. Well, what if you don't use that moving average, right? What are you going to do? Well, you got to figure out maybe how somebody else uses a fib. Uh, we used to have a trader trading with Nuke or trading with, yeah, trading with Nuke. Uh, he used to be a BRT member and he was awesome at fibs. Susan, she's awesome at fibs too. Uh, but yeah, uh, so you're walking yourself to the trade and then you see that signal, right? So you see it going to overcool and then you're like, well, I want to see sellers move out of the way on TTM. You see that that's check number two. What does volume look like? Okay. We got to celebrate right there. I want to wait for something else. I want to wait for a third confirmation or oh, it's coming back into my buy zone. Okay. I want to see that. I want to see it hold the 50. You see it hold the 50. Okay, you might think about be getting in right here. Yeah. And you're walking yourself through the trade, you know, because you're kind of expecting that already. You see it do something, you're like, okay, I mean, go with that. Here's my stop. And you get in right here. Your target could be right there where Lasagna Cat's target is. Yeah. And then, you know, you do that and you have a much better stop out than if you're using the 23. Uh, fib to the stop out, which can often you know work great, but um, uh, I'm looking for those tighter stops since I'm still getting some large stop outs. Um, I just need to buckle buckle down. Like my stopping out has gotten a lot better, but you know there's still work to do. Um, yeah, even if it's like two point stop out, you know, it, instead of being the twenty three percent or one tick below, I'll be like, okay, on this one, I'll take my my usual two point stop. You know, that'll be my stop out because that's what I'm willing to lose on this trade. Yeah. Because you're going to keep your red small. It's always easier to make back $10 and make back $100. Yeah. Always easier. You can always recover $10. And you you don't have that emotional attachment, right? You're like, yeah, I got shook out, but let me fucking reset. Let me reevaluate. Let me wait for the second leg or let me wait for the second pullback. Yeah. You want to be able to just, okay, let it go. $10 ain't shit. I could take another three $10 losses. Yeah. And then, and then you start walking yourself through the trade. Okay, I'm already out. I got stopped out. Let me see what I what I want to see next. Okay, it broke the 50 SMA. I want to see it come back and test it. Okay, I'm not getting in until it sees until I see it back test the 50 SMA. I'm I'm not sure if that's a 50 SMA by the way. I'm yeah. just that's hypothetical, right? If that was a 50 SMA right here, I say okay, it broke the 10 right here. So it came back and retested, right? So that's one of my rules come back it breaks the breaks a level whether it's a trend level fib level whatever if it breaks it you always want to wait until it comes back and test retest that level so you retest the 50 buy zone you're like okay that's that's a play where can you catch it to the 161 or moving average if it's like five points up if this is the 200 or the 100 and it's five point five points up you can lock in 75%. Hit your first target and then let the other rest ride. You can either attach it to a moving average, like I'm just going to let it there. And if it stops me out right here, I'm going to stop out. That's still awesome win. Yeah. Or I'm going to attach it to the 50 SMA so I can give it a little bit more breathing room to hit my second target. Um, there's different plays, but in order to be consistent, as soon as it hits your first target, whatever it is, move up your stop. It was right here, right? Well, move it up to right here. 
yeah. attach it to a moving average. If you have Ninja Trader, you can attach it to a moving average that it's above your entry, but you believe will give it breathing room to hit your second target. And that's all up to you. You might be able to hit the, you know, buy the, uh, sell the ask and, and get out of a trade if you feel that you don't want to give back that much money or whatever the case may be. But guess what? You're going to end up green no matter what. And that's what you want to do. Yeah, you give a little bit of money back. You'll get used to it. You'll be like, okay, next time I'll attach it to the 100 EMA. I'll give it more breathing room. And it's going to come back to the 50 and then go back up. Right? Whatever the case is. You'll start to trade your brain. Like, even if it's a green trade, you always journal that shit. And that was one of the other rules is, hey, you need to journal your trades. Mm -hmm. Journal your trades because... Um, Ray, Ray Dalio says that you have to identify your mistakes, identify all your, you know, your bad habits or whatever to be able to correct them. So in order to identify them, if you write them down, if you don't have somebody to talk to or critique your trades, then write them down to yourself and be like, okay, I could have done this better. I could have. I could have waited for a better pullback if you got pulled, you know, if you got stopped out. I, oh, I should have moved the stop down a little bit here. It, I, yeah, I would have lost 15 instead of $10, but I, that's still tolerable. My max loss is 50 bucks. So that's, you know, I could still take another two reds or whatever. But you want to be able to be more consistent. And that, those rules are going to help you be more consistent in in your trading career um and walking yourself through the trade is going to help you train train you faster um because i learned from brt and i love the elite system i love that but i'm always looking to sharpen up my tools by going to be like okay i learned this price action move let me see how somebody else uses that same move how can i implement it in into my strategy and that was something that I was telling lasagna cat was add stuff that complements your strategy or take stuff away from other people that complements your strategy. Don't try to change up your strategy because it's not working out. Try to fine tune it. Yeah. Has that worked? Yeah, absolutely. Cause like, if you do the other way, like if you abandon your strategy, you just, you just become one of those guys who bounces from strategy to strategy. And there's no way, if you do that, there's no way that you can establish any consistency because you're, you're not, you're not allowing the strategy to do its thing. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, Scovilles. All right. Uh, take care, buddy. Let's go. Yeah. Have a great weekend, man. Uh, Sergio brought up a, uh, uh, saying that, he has an issue with the uh, um he, he's not sure if he's plotting fibs right. Do you have any advice on that? Um you guys can see the screen, right? Uh, usually what we wait for it to do is you can either you can practice fibbing higher lows. If you are you a long player? Um uh, if you're a long player and you want to wait for a fib like in a in a place like this where it's creating lower highs. All right, if you're a short player, where's your first leg on this on this price action? He could have fibbed out right here to here because that's a higher low. You can also fib out where the um because this is the two hundred SMA and it's yeah. good to do it from where it hits where it contacts a moving average. So you could pull it all the way from there down to there, the low. Um, also like where I drew mine, it, it hadn't contacted the moving average um, up on top, but it did pass through the nine and 10. That's probably not as strong, but like it's good to draw them from red pullbacks off of a moving average. Like I did this and it's good to do it off of a red pullback. Yeah. So here it's good because it's a red pullback, but like real primo is um red pullback when it contacts a moving average. So that's honestly I've noticed that it doesn't matter if it's red or green pullback, it's still yeah. gonna hit. But like, hey, if it's a red pullback and my green level is right here, say this, say this candle's right here, right? Yeah. And I fib it from there to there, 
my 50 might be like right here, right? Because it's a longer stretch. Yeah. But you, you do it from a red pullback, which is here to here. So that's going to give you a better entry. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is with fibs, like Brandon and Connor would say, it's not a matter of if they're going to hit, it's a matter of when they're going to hit. So even if I, even if, if, Even if this candle was higher and I fibbed it from there because I just get a fresh high, you know, a higher high. So here's the first high and then um, it's still going to hit. I'm just going to have a, a different entry. Yeah. But the 38 to 61 entry would probably put it right here. It would line up. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, like my thirty-eight mile on with your fit with your sixty-one. Yeah. Which is what could be an entry. But you can do a red pullback. Uh Brandon does a moving average contact and you can always adjust it. So say let your target is one six one. It hits your target, you're out of the trade, but then you got a red pullback and it touches a two hundred, like Lasagna Cat said, you can fit it from there to there to see if you get a pullback into your buy zone. For the next yeah. leg up, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious. I, I obviously don't remember this; it's such a long time ago, a few months ago. But I'd be curious if price action continued up after that. Hard to tell because pulling this fib down from this two hundred moving average, that definitely would have contacted like you know sixty one fib, maybe even a little lower than sixty one fib is where that would be. But uh, I like what. Ty says sometimes he confirms his one minute fit with the five minute chart. It depends how fast price action is moving. There are a lot of ways you should practice with the historical data and see what lines up. And that is true. Sometimes like all this movement is 10 minutes worth of candle, but it's a pullback. So you can fit that, right? So that's like a five minute fib. Hmm. And that's what I've found has helped as well, too. Like, say uh, the one minute looks choppy and you're like, fuck, I don't know what, what, how to read it. Jump onto the five minute. If you could see, if you could see a nice little leg up and then be like, okay, the next candle should open red because it's coming up to the five minute 666. Okay, so we might see a rejection. Let me see if we get a rejection. If we get a rejection, let me see if we get a pullback to the 10 SMA. Right for confirmation for continuation play. Let's see yeah. if it stays above. It has to hold the ten SMA, whatever, whatever strategy you use, right? Um, but you're gonna fib it out from there to there, and the five minute will tell you. Will tell you, it might help you stay in the trade longer. You're like, fuck. You see all this chopping. You're like, man, I'm, it's gonna go down. Right, it's gonna go down, and then you you jump onto the five minute, and you're like, okay, the five minute still looks good. It looks bullish. It looks stronger than the one minute. And yeah. then jump onto the thirty minute to confirm the five minute. You jump onto the five. Usually, when it's a good bullish move or a good drop, the the five and the thirty are aligned. Wait, repeat that. Usually, when like. Say in the one minute you don't know where price action is going, jump onto the five or the thirty. Yeah. Because it might give you a clear, a more clear view of what price action might do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because even though the one minute is choppy as heck, you jump onto the five minute, you might see a nice little, nice little leg forming. You're like, okay, this is expected. I can stay in the trade a little bit longer, but that's later when you're you can tolerate a bigger loss, or you can tolerate a, a what we say, put your big boy your big boy pants on, you know, a little bigger, large, a larger yeah. stop loss. But by then, you might be averaging down. So that's like your next step, Lasagna Cat, is when the average down and when the scale up, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I have I have one average down uh trade from this week that that worked out real well. Um but yeah, that's uh that's an aspect that I haven't put too much thought towards, but yeah, that's yeah, a nice a nice new level up so to aim for. Yeah. 
And uh, you asked before if, if um, how's it been incorporating other like bits into my strategy and stuff. And the, those those leg entries have been really helpful, um, you know, for discerning when something's going to be a falling knife or like when something is going to continue for real confirmation. Because like I used to think and a lot of people think like if you got a if you got like a fib drawn and and you see a pullback but it's not pulling back to a major level you have no way of knowing if that pullback is going to falling knife or if it's going to continue up yeah so the way to deal with that is instead of buying on the way down which has been my habit oh yeah yeah sergio yeah that's a <laughs> that's a very common issue that i've been wrestling with actually for for years now <laughs> so but i think we found a key to to yeah. resolve that issue right because it seemed like you were catching falling knives how they say it um yeah. or getting in the trade early a little yeah. bit early but you would get stopped out because your stop was was like my entry was too high you know yeah and so when it came to like like a small stop out i was like man i gotta get out like i'd be buying up there and like and like i was like why aren't my fishing orders working like you're supposed to use fishing orders and stuff and like in certain situations sure but in a situation where your pullback isn't distinctly onto a major level with with proper catalyst stacking even that on its own doesn't really work unless your catalysts are are looking good on mm -hmm. point but in a situation like this you see where my entry is right it happened to work out but what you do is you take the low candle and you know this happens to be sort of like two low candles at the same level yeah but then you wait for the next candle that happens to push above um you often use the body of the low candle in this case the body was like a doji so mm -hmm. it's so it's like an, one tick up is like here or here and then you get in there and you're confirmed because this is your way of knowing that it held that fib zone or that other support or 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 whatever uh, and you're going with momentum or at least that's i think the best the best way that i know how to explain it you know what i'm saying instead of trying to catch momentum right you're with momentum yeah you're like you're not being like where should moment where should momentum be it's like oh this is where momentum is yep you, and, can't, you can't guess where momentum is going to be you can oh you can guess but like you know you still might catch up on it yeah you can still try to predict like in this in this screenshot you get the rsi confirmation because it goes into overcool right comes back into recovery pulls back a little bit and it goes up you're like okay that's creating higher lows right here you're like okay that's a nice cool little thing um to see now i want to see the macd cross okay i see the macd closing in okay I'm, I'm looking at price action okay what's it doing okay it's right here it's it has a little um hold on a sec uh you're like okay What's this over here? Oh, it's a one minute MES. Yeah. Uh, which it still lines up with right here, right? Is that what it is? Because it goes up and then it pulls up. So it goes yeah. up a level? Yeah, it's the same chart. So you already read the RSI. You already got a check. Check March. Okay, you get the MACD check. That's thirty-two catalyst volume. You're you're mixed. If you're new, you're like nah, that. Doesn't look good to me, right? Because you don't see a green volume beat until over here, mm -hmm. until over here. So that might be a little bit washy. You're like, okay, is there any levels where it might find support? Is wh what are these lines? These horizontal lines. Those are uh, the the dash ones are. Daily or weekly trends? You know what this is? That the bottom one, the orange one, that's standard dev minus one, which is a, a popular bounce on what you call it on, on feuds. Mm -hmm. And then this one right here is previous day, previous day low. Yeah. And, and that's where combining 
combining these levels and these strategies helps. So not just having one strategy, unless you're just a pure price action and you're, you know, you're just purely price action or support and demand zone uh, action, then having a lot of indicators might not be your style. But you can always integrate different styles if you're having a trouble, like say you've been an awesome price action trader, nothing but price action in a bull market, but in a bear market, which is, a, this is as of recently, we've experienced it, right? And I've noticed that Brandon switched his strategy. When we're in a bull market, he was using all kinds of different, uh, different strategies. And now in a bear market, he's presenting new tools or new strategies, new setups. He's like, okay, this is this is pretty cool. This works in the bear market. Let's see. You know, and what's good, it works. Okay, so you're integrating that into your stuff. When it's in a bull market, if it works there, then you just have more tools for to be more accurate when it's when the odds are in your favorite. It's kind of like a football game in the Super Bowl. You can see the momentum shift, and you're like, yeah. oh shit, the team's gonna come back and win it. You know, like the yeah. Patriots. I'm not a Patriot fan. No offense to anybody. Uh, but anyways, um, when they came back and they won, you seen the momentum shift and that's what you want to see. You want to see the momentum shift. You're like, oh shit. Okay. I'm going to ride the wave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and also like with learning new stuff, you know, when you have a system or, or a, a setup that works, if you can find other evidence from other systems that like further, confirms it or that gives you a new way to tighten it up even just a little bit like there's no such thing as being you know like the the more i mean you don't want to confuse yourself with learning too much stuff but like if you see a little thing that helps helps you to tighten up your setup a little bit you know and you're learning stuff at a comfortable rate yeah it's like you know why, why won't you do it yeah take it one step at a time yeah, like me so with that two legged pullback, I was like, oh shit, he uses it. Okay, he uses it like he uses it with his moving average. And like yeah. the price action dudes or traders say is like you can make any any price action fit any moving average. True, but it's whatever appeals to you. Like some people I used to use the 180 and now I don't even use the 180. I just use the 200, you know, whatever Brandon uses. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. And but then they all work. from that is to like use the same moving averages, you know, don't just jump from moving average to like, oh, I'm going to take the 200 off my, my chart and I'm going to put on the, the, the 180 or whatever it is. Yeah. Like if you find that, that, that the market in general is adjusting to that one in general, then yeah, sure. But if you find that, like, if you just keep jumping from one to another, it's the same as like, kind of like switching up your strategy before you really yep. gave it a chance to, uh, to, to, that you could be good at it develop it don't don't like cancel it out be like okay what can i take from that to add to mine that's your be open-minded going into any any strategy is okay i don't understand the anchor vwaps but i understand the levels do they line up with any levels that line up with my strategy to help me uh grasp the anchor VWAP level or levels a little bit or plays a little bit better, right? Yeah. Let me see. That's kind of what Brandon did. Let me see what uh, Connor's anchor VWAPs line up with elite, with his levels. Oh, okay. I see what you're seeing. Okay. Now I see why. You know, and they line up. So the both plays work. But Connor's attracted to the anchor VWAP, and, but he's not opposed to Brandon's elite le levels either. And you guys see in the morning when their levels line up and they see it from different perspectives. Yeah. And they're both right, but they can either one of them can be wrong too. Yeah. And that goes for anything that that goes with me too. I call out a play and it's like, Oh shit. Yep. It's going to squeeze right here. And the next thing you know, it dumps. Is that something that I've seen, but somebody that was a short player, they're like, Oh yeah, it's going to dump, you know? But that's where it, you should be in the chat. Hey, this is what I see short. And that helps. That would help me tremendously. Like, okay, next time, let me see if I see what, uh, what Sean. Sean's really good at trading short. 
I was like, let me see what when he posts his screenshot. Okay, let me see what he sees. Let me see what his levels line up with my levels. Or I ask him, hey, how'd you get that level? Okay, cool, good to know. So like yeah. that, it's helping me on the short side of the game. So we all help each other. Like, okay, this is what. Well, okay, that's cool. Even though we can both be right, you know, it can, it can pop to drop or dip to rip, all in the same thing. Yeah, I mean that's exactly true. Cause like the other day, I think I'm remembering this correctly, there was a pop to short anticipated, but I saw my I saw my long setup happening, and I was like, and instead of like letting the short call sort of trip me out, I was like, well, let my call to go long just because I, you know, I'm seeing my setup. Let that be the pop that gets to the level that they're going to um short from. You know, if that's what ends up happening. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You hit the freaking yeah. nail on the head. And that's yeah. a good way to let like Brandon's like play setup or narrating. He's more advanced. So he's gonna see shit like that we don't see yet. Yep. As we climb that ladder, we're gonna start to see his setup. We're like, oh shit, now we see it. But slowly but surely he's the way he's describing stuff, I'm starting to appeal more to it because he's dropping little nuggets. Yeah. I don't know if it's because I've been here for a few years and it's like, oh shit. Now I'm starting to see why he does it. Just like when I was telling you guys three weeks ago, like talk yourself through the trade, or when we first started this, talk yourself through the trade because you're training yourself, you know, to minimize doubt. Yeah. And that was all these little nuggets are like, well, shit, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not crazy by like, talking to myself. Uh I don't know. It reminds me of that show back in the day where it used to be in that dude's head. Oh. Herman and it was like a comedy. Yeah. I was thinking about that show the other day. Holy shit. But anyways, that, that was the first show. And that's what you gotta do is have that conversation in your head or out loud or whatever. Whatever yeah. it is, have that conversation. Uh, so then the following week after creating some basic rules was, okay, now you got your your first setup and then you got some basic rules around it. Let, let's continue going there. We continue fine-tuning those. Like, okay, now you you're, you started tightening up your, your stop loss. And I seen that improving and I seen your stop losses improving and your reset recovery was also improving. Yeah. So all these little things are improving at the same time. You know, even though you don't see it, I see it. Somebody else will see it. You're like, oh shit, he's starting to catch on. So now he's keeping his red small. He's not bag holding no more. So that should give you the confidence. Okay. I'm in a lot better state to not blow up my account. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And grow it. Yeah. So grow it more consistently. Don't put that pressure. I know that that daily goal, because one of our one of our strategy or system to to create that consistency is let's take what you're trading, right? Like let's say you start with 600. For example, that's what I started out. My goal for one month was to double that. 600 yeah. bucks. For one month. So I took the 600 month goal. And then the best way to achieve your goal is break it down into manageable chunks. So then I took 600 bucks, divide that by four. Okay, that's a lot better. That, lo- that number looks a lot more achievable, right? Yeah. You're like, fuck, <laughs> I got 600 bucks. You're like, damn, you feel that pressure. But you're like, okay, let me break it down. Yeah. Let me break it down. Okay, it'd be 150 bucks a week. Oh. That seems like, like I can make that. You know, yeah. I make I make three hundred bucks in a day at work. Let me see if I can make one fifty. That should be pretty cool. Okay, mm-hmm. let me break it down into even more smaller chunk. So I do f- divided by five. So that's you know twenty five bucks or like thirty bucks a day. Yeah. Um. Uh. So that's thirty bucks a day. Okay, that's a little bit better and what's even better is okay how many i took it because how many trades i can take i i mean i could trade all day 
But I was like, let me see something reasonable where I can break that down into a, a better chunk. So I took the 30 and I told my, when I was SIM trading, I found out that if I traded more than five trades a day, I was giving back profits. Either because I was forcing trades, now I can trade more consistently, where I can trade five, six times a day and, and still win. But that, even that is, is a little bit more nerve-wracking because you feel like you're going to give money back. Because mm -hmm. you never know. It might be a fucking news fucking alert that a war world war three is going to start you're like oh shit and then there goes your, you know that could be at a moment's notice yeah so creating that practice of hey i can only take four trades i can only take two trades even if you can only take two trades right you're like fuck i broke it down and, and my daily and my daily goal is 50 bucks and i can only take two trades uh and it's and it's only and it's 25 bucks a trade because I can only take two, right? You're like, yeah. fuck, that seems a little... You still feel that pressure. You're like, fuck. Yeah. Okay, well then, let's readjust. Let's minimize my goal. Instead of 600, let's do 500, 400. Mm -hmm. Something where you feel... You don't feel that pressure like, hey, let, if I hit 25 bucks, I'm good. And yeah. something that creates more consistency that I told you to add to your strategy. So if you're addicted to trading, which futures can become addicting, we might have to start AA meeting after yeah. <laughs> after a few yeah. years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm but ready anyways, now. what's that? I think I'm ready now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but after you hit your daily goal, fucking call it a day. Yeah. Fucking call it a win fucking be proud of that shit and then you know you you go into the next day you carry that yeah that, conf that confidence yeah. and you like stack it up stack I, up little wins for sure i can't remember if it was you who said it or brandon who said it it was it was about not trading after you meet your goal and it was like so your goal is your job for the day um so if your job for the day was to paint a house, when you're done painting the house, you're not going to keep painting the house. <laughs> you're done painting the house. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You have to have that defined. But if you don't have it defined, you know, you it, it feels like you're endlessly trading. You're like, fuck, this, it doesn't make it fun. Yeah. It doesn't make it fun. But at least having, a, at, at least in my eyes, that's just the type of thing like, if I hit my daily goal, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm fucking done for the day, you know? Yeah. I, like, that's like a big weight off my shoulders, even though the pressure's not really on it. You know, if I end up, fit, if my daily max red is 50 bucks, I'll be like, cool, I can lose that, you know? Yeah. That's my max stop. I can lose that, no, no, sh shake that shit off and start trading the next day. Yep. Yeah. And that helps you reset. That helps you create that mentality of like, hey, I'm just going to reset. Uh, don't forget uh, that helps you reset and not be such in a sour move. But if you're bag holding and you don't have that stop defined and you're 100 red and you don't have that defined, you're like, fuck. Fuck this shit. This is not for me. <laughs> Right, you start doubting yourself, and you don't want to create doubt because then that just makes you chase a new strategy, and you don't want to be there. Yeah, you you start you'll start taking a uh, bad setup setups that aren't there. <laughs> I like Peter after you after the painting the house, you just start spray painting the cats and the kids and the car. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah it, it, it could become addiction but have that like instead of once you hit your daily goal you still have like okay ultimately i want to trade four or five trades a day right hmm. set that up okay so i'll trade two live because my account size and my my schedule right now mm -hmm. my schedule right now only allows me to trade two yeah so let me let me take two live trades and let me take three or, or a two or three sim trades 
to see what kind of target you can hit. Yeah. And you're still going to use the same strategy, the same stop loss, because just because it's sim, you don't want to be like, yeah, I'll let it come all the way down here to the 200 when that's like 10 points away. And well, that's yeah. not your normal stop loss. Yeah. You, you still want to keep the same habits. You don't want to start creating bad habits. Yeah. Because we started, you know, we if you're a, a current member, you probably have some bad habits from other trading or whatever you've created while you've learned like i've had to correct all my habits but now we're trying to start creating good habits and if you start sim trading and just extending your stop you're going to recreate that life mm, true you don't want that you don't want to recreate it be the same shit same same rules apply yeah, And that's something that creating rules helps too because you're practicing your rules, you're practicing your strategy in sim. Like if you're doing the, the prop the prop firms, go sim trade your, your strategy. Okay, I'm going to do my strategy. I'm going to fine tune it. I'm going to create rules. Okay, I created rules. Okay, now I'm going to walk myself to the trade. I don't know how long they let you uh, sim trade or whatnot, but anyways, you're going to practice that. Boom. All right. I'm gaining consistency. I'm confident. Okay. Now I'm going to practice. If you start out with the 50 grand account and their goal, they give you, a, I think they don't they give you a daily goal. I'm not sure. Sergio or somebody I know has prop firm account. Uh, but anyways, if they have a 50, make that your fucking goal. Make their goal your goal. Okay, fuck it. Let me work on that strategy. Let me fine tune my strategy in sim until I'm hitting that until I'm hitting that goal. And then you can fucking go blow up your account or, or go uh you know literally blow it up in a good way, like up, not like kapush god. <laughs> like mine when they blew up, they wouldn't come back. <laughs> Oh no, there you go. I thought I thought you had like like a fifteen hundred dollar weekly go or or don't you have like a goal that you have to achieve before they let you trade live? Like hey, you have to hit this goal before you can go get live money. Okay, so that's not bad. 3k you could with 50k account you should fucking be able to hit that shit in a month for sure for sure you've seen brandon fucking hit 1200 he i think he made like eight grand off a of 1200 account on futures so definitely make that your goal but like i said go practice your strategy go practice your your create your rules fine tune them um, until you're ready, and then and then fucking jump in live, and then you're gonna fucking just slaughter them. Be like, give me my fucking money, give me my twenty five grand. I'm gonna go take it to Ninja Trader and trade it, and I'm gonna keep a hundred percent of that shit, or whatever the case is. But yeah, dude, fucking hell yeah, that's what I like to see. Oh yeah, that's nice. Um. So keep at it, dude. I mean, you, it looks consistent to me. Yep. And you've seen me, you know, consistency. You just keep, if you see, if you fuck up on a trade, okay, what did I do wrong? You want to try to find that consistency. And that's where we slowly created. He took his second setup. And then the following week, we added uh, more rules to that setup. You remember that process? Oh, is that um? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I I missed that. I was looking at something else. Were you talking about when we did the moving averages? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah when we added a second setup, and then we it was like a a setup that I told you to trade only after you completed your first two trades with your fib, and then start looking. We slowly added it to your to your current first setup. Yeah. As a secondary fallback so, plan. So I do have that setup so this is a moving average setup so um you see it's like really similar to like this one you know there's the same uh established support 
and then um you hit a higher low so like let's say on this one this has a really nice fib area too it's got a pullback from the 50 moving averages down to uh again a, a standard dev support uh with the higher low here um <clears throat> But let's say like this is my ad zone on my fib, this grayed out area, and uh, boom, it, it it jumped out, and I didn't get my entry. It just jumped out, you know, and like I, I missed it. Um, so what we do here is uh, Semper was like, all right, let's let's add moving averages. So what it is is like, okay, so it busted out of my fib ad zone, all right, but now it's uh, it busted over the fifty moving average and um is finding some support there um hits its head on the 100 and makes the pullback and i believe that's a common elites moving average thing yep. is like you get the 50 you get the 100 it 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 hits the 50 uh hits the 100 comes back to confirm the 50 and takes off so this is another thing and it's a perfect second higher low uh setup um one of the things that's great about this setup is I'm sure we've all been there when it like when when we miss our entry, so to speak, um, that can sometimes be difficult to deal with emotionally. That can sometimes even lead you to like a secondary entrance that's like bad entry. Or like since you missed a premium setup later on in the day, you might be pissed or feel neglected and like or abandoned and like look for shit setups um yeah. that you think are good but this right here shows you that the play is still in play you're just looking for a different system or an additional system rather to provide you an entry because this play looks very very similar like to this one you know higher low higher low take off um you know higher low higher low take off uh fib targets you know and SMA targets. Yep. So, and that was my introduction to how to use uh, moving averages. And like, you'll see a lot of my plays are, are, are uh, Semper showed me this moving average stack, 666, 200, 150, and then like the nine and 10. Um, and so that stack is something I've really been using a lot lately. And this pullback to the 50 is a great secondary entry when you miss your your, your first one for whatever reason. Um, or if you're not a first pullback player and you're waiting on the second pullback and you see that it's behaving with moving averages this way. Yep. And, and that's something that you should take slow. Don't watch this video and be like, oh, I'm going to implement it. Only if you're laser on your fibs, okay? Because honestly, uh, I could have, like Sergio, this is a perfect example. Remember I was kind of drawing it, but he drew it from his pullback red, right? I, I drew it from this candle. I would have drawn it at, that's what I used to do, drive yeah. from that candle, right? But I was like, uh, it may, to me, it makes a little bit more sense to go to the fresh high yeah, to the low or whatever the case is. And that's all preference. But look, both plays would have worked out. They both would have hit up here, up, up, up on the top. Yeah. Um, But I love that you put the fib overlay on top because this is a perfect picture that multiple strategies work and that all depends on what you see as a new trader you might not see the plays that i see right here and yeah. I'll, I'll i'll break it down i see the fib play mm -hmm. i see the two-legged pullback play and i see yeah. a moving average play yeah totally They're all in one play and this is where i say that my two-legged pullback, my, you know, might be your FIB levels or your MA levels, whatever the case is. And that's also where you can be right going short and I can be right going long. Yeah. Um, And that all depends what your style is. But obviously we recap the FIB level, how it came back, right? Or the zone. Because a FIB player would have entered here. Because it got pulled back, right? Because it was a higher low. Yeah. Got contact with the moving average. Did his fib. Came back into his buy zone. Confirmation. This is a confirmation. But still, the way Lasagna Cat was getting in 
was on the way down, on the way down, like he would have caught it on this red. But that's his, his, his play setup, right? He was having issues with that. This is just an example, Lasagna Cat, of one yeah, of the plays sure. that you were telling me. Yeah. Um, and then you see a moving average play. Okay, so you seen the fib, you got in, and you hit your target. Let's say your target was the right here somewhere for some reason. Okay. And then I'm a moving average player. Okay, I'm waiting for the 58 for price action to break the 50 SMA. So it broke right here. Okay, now I want to see a retest. Comes back, hits the 50 SMA. Where should I get in? Because Lasagna Cat, like I said, he was getting in here. No fault to you, Lasagna Cat. I'm just trying to trying to share what I shared with him that made his entries a little bit better. I've shared this with a few other members and it's helped their, their, uh, their entries a little better. Um, so instead of getting in over here on a red candle going down, yeah, it tagged your target, right? And that's the confirmation. But like I always say, you don't want to get in just because it hits that level. You want to get in, okay, what do I see? I see RSI, check. That's one of my first signals. That it held the 50 RSI. It pulled back to the 50 SMA. Boom, check, check. That's two. Okay, I see volume coming in right here. I got a volume B over this red. Um, you know, so I got a volume B right here. Okay, maybe I should get in. Okay, where am I getting in? I'm getting looking for a candle that creates a low. So either one of these candles, okay, that's the low. You identified the pullback low. So now you want to hold back your the 50 RSI and hold the 50. I held the 50 right here. Okay, so I'm getting in one tick above the body of the low candle. So in this example, it'd be that one, right? That's if I'm a moving average player. And I used to be... I used to use fishing orders a lot and I still use them, but I use them less. It was, it was, I figured I was a little bit more consistent entering like this because my entry was one tick above the break, the body of the low candle, the body. If it has a little wick, if you want to be a little bit more safe, then wait for a break above that. You're going to have a, like two or three ticks above, sometimes more. But my stop would be right here. But I also, it might not be my stop. I might be like, oh, shit, well, it might come back to the 50, 50 fib buy zone. That looks like a good support. So then I'll, I'll adjust my stop. Usually my stop will be one tick right there. Usually on my first trade, it'll be like, that's my textbook trade right there. One tick below, I enter one tick above the break of the body to go long. Usually that's my play, right? After I build up a cushion, after I build up, um, I've ha I've I had two green trades, okay. Then I might adjust my stop down here or the break of the Bollinger Band, right? If I if I'm up like, because at first that daily goal is gonna help you. The daily goal is gonna help you like create that consistency. After a while, you're gonna be hitting that daily goal even mm -hmm. after. Even after you extend it, like say you went from 50 bucks a day to 100 bucks a day, yeah. you're going to be hitting that shit consistently because we're going to help you scale up because you're going to build up your account and you're going to feel a little bit more confident and a little bit more secure because let's say you started out with 600 and you're up 300 bucks. Yeah. You're already feeling good. You're on house money right? So you yeah. feel that confidence. You're on house money. Okay, so now I can take a $100 red day. Yeah. And you start to accept that you fucking not that you're going to have red days, but you start to accept that. Okay. I feel good losing a hundred bucks today. I, 150 bucks, whatever, because let's say you take four trades and you have one more trade for the day, or you take three trades and you have one more trade for the day. And you're like 25 bucks away from your red, yeah. but it's about to close. Because remember, if if you start out with six or eight hundred bucks, you have to have twelve hundred bucks right now in your account by one forty five p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which would be what four forty five Eastern mm -hmm. Time. 
before they maintenance call you. If you don't if you don't shut down your trade by 445, you better be fucking closed out because futures market does not close at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is four. It continues going. It shuts down at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. It shuts down 5 p.m. So what's a maintenance call? Maintenance call, that's when you have to have the money in your account to cover the margin. Ah, okay. So when you enter a trade, you'll say initial margin, 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then it'll say maintenance margin, like 11, 1200. It depends on the volatility. It could be higher or, or less. Uh, but you'll see the maintenance. If you do not have that maintenance uh, money in your account, they will margin call you. And you, you avoid that just by making sure everything's closed out before then. Yeah. You avoid that by closing out your trade at, at 143 or, four, you know, whatever, whatever time zone you're in. Yeah. Uh, like two minutes before 145 or, you know, 15 minutes before close. Because when I first started out, I was like, fuck yeah. It, you know, it looked like a bull flag. It's going to fucking break. It's going to continuation. I was like, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hold <laughs> And then I come back to my computer and I'm, you know, red. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, it's fucked up. <laughs> red 50 bucks. Right. And you're, they're like, oh shit. And then I got an email like margin calls like, oh fuck. Yeah. And they'll waive the first time. They'll waive it. The second time it'll be twenty five bucks, and then the third time will be fifty bucks or more. Or after a subsequent, it will be fifty bucks. And they'll fucking blow up your your account. You just blow it up when you're a small account, like say six hundred. You blow it up, and you only have fifty bucks in there. Yeah. After. You can still like say fuck. I just lost six hundred bucks. I had to fucking wait another three months until I save up. That fifty bucks will stay in there, but you have to keep putting fifty bucks. You have to keep building that account up. Yeah. Um. But like I said, you it creates that consistency. You're gonna create that consistency, and you're gonna scale up. Um. After that, we went into um more advanced trading psychology at first we're like my market psychology or uh not market uh trading psychology now we're market psychology like what does what does that on what happens on data days what happens uh when pal's gonna speak what happens on certain certain things and this is all stuff that you guys should be jotting down and this is where i started to, i started to see a pattern I started to see a pattern like if they run it up right before Pal, that means Pal's gonna say something that's gonna drop it. But if they dump it right before Pal, then Pal's gonna say something to push it back up. And I started to see that pattern, and and it flips and it flops, and that's where we start talking about um, good data is good for the market or good data is bad for the market. Right, because it's like when they were saying, uh, oh, we need inflation to go down. We need inflation to go down, right? But what happens when inflation goes down? Uh, jobs, jobs should go up. Uh, or not, uh, job cut. There should be more jobs on the market, right? But the good news of having a strong job market was bad for the market because that means people still want to buy and they have the money to go buy. So you can't, you have to think inverse. Why is having a strong market bad for the market in that instance or in that instance? Um, so you kind of got to be like, okay, because you have to kind of, you have to, you don't have to, but it'll benefit you if you understand. Because sometimes I'm like, I'm clueless. We're like, well, is this good for the market or bad for the market? I'll straight up ask uh, Brandon, is this good or bad? 
And then he started explaining like, oh, okay, now I see why it's bad for the market. And then that's after. First, you want to start on your trading psychology because you want to think inverse of a regular how we grew up. Now you want to, you want to, you want to see how the market, how the inverse of the market is. And you'll start to see that, okay, so the if the data is good, and you'll start to see the headlines in the news before the mar before the data comes out, there'll be little hints, okay, this might happen, or they'll say, oh, it's already baked in, right? That's one of their favorite phrases. Uh, the the 0. 0.50 hike raise is baked in, okay. So if he said if if Powell says something to the effect that it is baked in, then it's good for the data. But if he says no, we're still raising high or oh, we're still raising hikes, oh shit, that's that's hawkish. So it's gonna go down. So that's where we get into deeper uh, market mindset, market psychology, and that's a little bit more advanced. Um, but that's when you start to put all the pieces together. And right now, Lasagna Cat, he's gotten better, right, Lasagna Cat, where you're like. Fuck, I hate trading data days. I fucking get burned all the time too. Like, okay, let me wait for the second leg or let me wait, you know, 15 minutes after the, the data release. Yeah, absolutely. And even in a, a week like this where there's a couple of Powell days, I um, that's where it was revealed to me. Like, okay, I see opportunities here, but they're just scalps. You know, like, I was like, all right, these are scalping opportunities. And like, um. You know, it was interesting because during market hours this week, none of those Powells like 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 resulted in a huge whipsaw move, um, which was also interesting. But um, yeah, it's it's like those types of uh, that type of data release is going to really dictate what type of day it's going to be. So it's it's a matter of being on your toes and being willing to roll with the punches of that. Or or even if you're not comfortable trading those days, sim trade it. Yeah. Okay, I see my setup. Let me see what happens in sim trading. Yeah. You're going to start to get used to and develop, okay, this is how I should trade these days. And yeah. that's what I started doing, okay? Fucking remember Brandon says, says oh, I'm not going to trade in. I'm not going to trade Monday right, uh, right, be, right before PAL day because he right. knows it's going to be chopped. Yeah. Well, and, and another one is like, I used to, I used to really, I used to really like get a lot of reds by, by continuously trying to go, go long on an algo sell day. And like, mm -hmm. because like, how do you know that the whole day is going to be a sell? Mm -hmm. But I, I've learned some tools recently to really help guard myself against that. Um, second leg entries, um, the moving average stack is huge for that. Um, and then also do those second leg entries, small stops, you know, Hey, guess what? You get two of those in a day, just leave, go, yeah. you know, it's over. Yeah. That's one of the rules that I had that I, you know, I posted my rules. I don't know if you want to post your rules for others to see, but we can pin it, um, uh, where I have either, I have two, I have three stop losses, right? You have your trade per trade stop loss. If you want to have one, and like I said, you can always adjust it. If you have a cushion, you you can adjust that. Yeah, but not until then. Don't don't get in a bad habit of extending that cushion when you don't even you know you're already red. You're starting off red. Why yeah. start off even bigger red, right? Um. So keep that first trade small and tight, and be like, okay, what did I see that I that that fucked up the trade, or you know what happened? I I. I saw my setup. Okay, what didn't I see that fucked up my trade? It could have been like, okay, it was data release. Shit, next time I'll pay attention to data sure. release. Right? You're going to have to identify that and then be like, okay, reset. All right, let me see what the next play could be. Is it is it a is it a bounce off the hundred fib? Is it a bounce off the one hundred EMA, or is it a a bounce off the two hundred or whatever whatever the next play is? You can start resetting. Fuck fuck that trade. Let's reset. Let's move on. 
Yeah. That's what you're going to be. You don't want to be like fucking dwelling. Oh, man, I just lost 50 fucking dollars. You're like, fuck. So my first trade, I'll keep it tight, nice and tight. Okay, I'm red. Oh, fuck it. I'm red. I can still I still have another 40 buck buffer red, right? Yeah. And adjust it after you have a cushion. My second stop loss is if I have two red trades, I'm done for the day. I, I Obviously, that day, I don't have my mojo. Yeah. Fuck it. Fuck it. Let's let's call it a day, or I'm gonna wait until power hour. As I gain, as I gain more experience, like if I had two red trades, okay, I'm gonna not trade the rest of the day. Okay, after that, I would sim trade during power hour. Okay, so let me see if I can make my money back during power hour. Yeah. I was like, oh shit, I can win power hour. I can if I if I have two red trades, or if I have a $50 max or whatever, I'm close to my max, I can go trade power. So then I started correcting that habit because yeah, you're afraid of continuing to go red, but you're, you're still seeing the setup. So you're practicing. Okay. I can reset. I can still see the next place setting up. Yeah. So that's the second stop loss. The third stop loss is max. Okay. I lost 250 bucks. I'm done for the day. I'm not, that's my that's my max. That's the most I feel. That's the the most comfortable I feel losing for the day. Yeah. Um. Hey, Sergio, I pinned mine so you can see mine on the futures chat. You should be able to see them. Uh, yeah, I you have them right here. Uh, if you click on the little pin, you should see uh seven oh nine TOS. Uh, script and then the PDF book and then the rules and Brandon has his rules too his pinned up too so if you like his rules you want to create your own rules because you everybody even though we all use the same setup we all have our own rules because we have different account sizes or we have different comfortability zones. Like, okay, I feel comfortable losing 50 when the lasagna cat feels comfortable losing 25 bucks. So whatever you feel comfortable. So whatever you feel comfortable with, just get comfortable with that. And then remember, the rule says don't get comfortable, don't get too comfortable in the game. You always want to try to improve. Because you always want to get out of your comfort zone. So, like, once you start with one contract or two contracts, okay, out of your comfort zone, it's okay, let me scale up to four contracts or three contracts. Same targets, same everything. But guess what? You're scaling up your contract size. So, guess what? You're going to hit your – you went from $50 daily goal to 100 You scaled up your contracts, and you're still hitting the same targets. You're still going to hit your daily target, even though you increased it. And that's what builds consistency. That's what builds consistency is like, okay, now I got two weeks under my belt hitting 100 bucks per day. Fuck yeah, you feel that confidence. And I've seen it. I've seen it in Lasagna Cat. Yep. I asked them, okay, how do you feel this morning? Okay, wh wh what do you think the market's going to do? Shh. And then I give them my input, like, hey, okay, this this is what I see. And then he'll be like, okay, you know, I want to see this and that. Even though he has his own point of view, I don't try to be like, well, this and that. I said, you may want to be careful with this. This is what I see. I see, you know, a, re uh, a resistance zone here or I see a support zone here. And he's like, oh, okay, I don't see that, but let, let me check it out. Let me see if it plays out. And that's what you want to be. You don't want to be like, no, I don't, I don't see that shit. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. Like, <laughs> dude, you gotta be like, okay, let me keep an eye out. Cause he's giving you an eye. He's giving you an eye for something that he sees that you probably don't have that eye for. Like, 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 like uh, Brandon, he can call out a squeeze candle. He can, that's, he's, that's how fucking good he is. He can call out a squeeze candle. be like, okay, Oh shit, he sees something in volume or RSI or, or MACD or TTM and he's like, oh shit, it's a squeeze. It's coming. And yeah. then it, it almost to the T is like, okay, we're squeezing. Oh yeah, there's that candle. There's that big fat candle I was I was talking about. 
and we'll get there. Um, but let's help each other. Hey, if you're a short player, let me see how you see short because it's going to help me just become a better trader. Yeah, and I, I keep saying this, but like, you know, when I'm done going through this process with Semper, you know, I'd love to see someone else go through it as well. And then like, you know, just like learn from that, see how someone else develops their setup and see what their turning points have been in like, you know, developing confidence and um and everything. It's just really helpful to everybody. Yeah, I've been getting good feedback. Like, hey, like people have been reaching out like, hey, here's my trade. Like, what do you see wrong? Okay. Either you're over trading or hey, next time look for this. Right, Lasagna Cat, when you told me, hey, oh, I got a red trade, or I would tell you either, oh, you entered too early, or hey, next time look for this, or wait for this. That's was, a big one. Wait for this to happen next time before even looking to get in. It was that experience when I sent you, when I was like, I, I messaged you and I said, oh shit, I got a red. And um, I was like, oh shit. He was like, I, he was like, you got in too early. I already know. And I was like, what? And then that's when you, you, you taught me about this moving average stack. You're like, you're like the, 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 the 200 hadn't yet crossed under the 666. And I was like, oh, what? And then I started watching it and I was like, man, again and again and again. Uh, so that, that rule went like, right to the top of my rules yep and, and that's adapting you know to like okay i fucked up what can i do you know and if you see like i'm long and you're short and i'm right like hey sam would you would you see that i didn't see you know or yep. I, I i was thinking long or some other members reach out to me like hey Oh, you think long? Oh, I'm thinking short. Okay, this is what I see. Okay, what do you see? Yeah. And it's having that conversation. Yep. It's not be like, oh, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, let me see. Okay, I'm starting to see what, what Lasagna Cat's seeing. Okay, I might want to get out. Or Lasagna Cat's going to say, oh, Simp's right. Let me see. I might want to get out. Yep. Before my stop loss, it might save you a few bucks, but accept the fact that you're not always going to be right. Yeah. And that helps you just be like, cool, calm, collective. So after the two setups, we created more rules, market psychology, and then we just pretty much been, you just been rocking and rolling with your two setups. In yep. How how's it been since? It's been real good. There's been some weeks of like really high win rates, um, like seventy five percent better. And then you know, then there'd be maybe like a little bit of drawdown in a win rate. And then, um, what do you call it? And then an, uh, and then nice stability. And then I was noticing that on some days, some weeks the win rate didn't change, but but the small reds to big greens is what changed. Um. Mm -hmm. So I was like, cool. So I was observing all these different metrics of like how I was improving and stuff. Um, and also um, some of the reason, uh, some of the, some of the weeks, like progress in terms of win rate wasn't apparent because like I was incorporating new stuff that I'd learned and sort of still getting a hang of it. Um, but then when I got that drilled better, it's like the win rate would again, like improve and like stabilize. Um, which I thought was cool. And because like, since the rules like get streamlined, like as the process goes, and since new, um, you know, like new elements get, get absorbed into the strategy, like the 200, 666 cross, um, it's just like the emergence of my own style has really become apparent. Mm -hmm. Um, and then along with that, I also started paying a bit more attention to catching a play that was like more of like a higher low play, like like starting to look for these like a low going into like like which one's the higher low of the day and catching that. Um, and 
so so that would be like the last few weeks and um it's it's been going great and um and the thing that really has improved a lot is the confidence level and like um i think one of the main things that helped you out with that was at first we had a target goal right yeah because in order for you to hit your trade your per trade target you had to hit three points per trade we figured that out right yeah. you're like okay we can hit three trades or we can hit three points so we got you used to hitting three points and you guys will see me i'll catch five points and i'm fucking happy with that oh yeah. that's cool that's 25 ticks or uh 20 ticks that's that's pretty damn good yeah. you know depending on how and then you get used to that so you're going to create that consistency even faster because you're not shooting you're not you're not trying to hit home runs right now. What you want to do is just add up those base hits, add up those base hits. Don't just like the A's. I'm an A's fan. They had the uh the money ball thing. Yeah. And they would yeah, just get ball. they would just get a bunch of players that could get on base. Yeah. So that's what we that's what we're practicing. Hey, let's practice getting on base. Okay. So we're gonna practice just getting on base. Okay, let me hit my first target. Lock out. If you start out with one contract. One target, right? Three points. One target. Yeah. With two, with two, with two. That's when shit. That's when shit and futures can get real and fucking real, fucking good. Yeah. After you can get with two, because you can still lock in, because you're used to hitting that three points. Lock in one right there, and then let one ride. And if you don't want to give up less than three points on that second contract, then move your stop up to that, to that point. To yeah. that three points, right? And let it ride. And if you get stopped out, you're fucking green. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. And and that's what I'm thinking for starting to trade live is, you know, I'm going to start with two contracts. So, um, you know, I'm going to keep, you know, levels and moving averages in mind. But what I have in mind is a, a three point target for the first one and then let one ride and then, you know, do um, and dictate my stop like either... uh either like the next moving average down or you know maybe the uh uh what you call it um what is it called entry yeah like the entry point mm -hmm. um because like I i'm gonna base a lot of it on tighter stops and so like i could take a stop on the second contract but I also feel kind of protective because it's my second, because it's going to be my first week live trading. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Just because we're doing the small account challenge, don't feel the pressure of like, hey, I want to be able to post a fucking a $50 win on two contracts on the first yeah. day. Right. Don't, don't put that pressure on you. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. It's not to, you know, be putting unneeded pressure yeah absolutely. Uh, and just share your trades yeah uh, or if you don't want to then don't it doesn't matter it's just like keep that routine going forward yeah. don't go backwards yeah for sure forwards only Um, so it's been real good. And, um, you know, even, even including this week, I've, uh, oh, Steve D says, let's see the magic. Hell yeah, Steve. We'll see if we can create it. Yeah. Wish me luck. Uh, cool. Yeah. I, I, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm I'm looking forward to the, the live. Are are you going to like be posting a meeting link? This kind yeah, of probably. Thing? Yeah. Probably on Friday or on Monday. I mean, yeah um yeah we'll um, see it might be super slow so i may or may not be able to take a trade but i'm gonna try to narrate how i'm how i'm walking myself to the trade we could just do it how we do it like how yeah. we did it this morning or hey you're you're telling me what you see and i'm telling you what i see yeah doing sure. it as a team like okay this is what i see okay okay it looks like simp's price action is moving towards his target or his price level let me see for sure, and and we'll we'll do uh, interaction uh, through the the futures uh, Discord chat. Uh, probably just regular Brandon's chat, I guess. I don't know. 
All right, we'll figure it out. It'll be my first time. Yeah, uh, a little bit nervous, but we'll see. Uh, it's understandable. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll be nervous too because I'll be trading, uh, you know, money again. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Maybe not that nervous. I don't know. I, I feel good. Like I don't feel a- any intimidation about it. Like I just feel like, you know, I'm gonna just kind of look for what I've been looking and not trip myself out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, we're here to help, and I mean, that's hopefully what what people get out of this. Uh. But definitely, I, I love the, I love where you started out because I knew you were down and kind of out. Yeah. You know, so we're here to pick each other up. That's another thing that I picked up out of here, man. If you're struggling or if you're out there like just like about to give up, don't give up. This shit takes time. It takes time. Even if you've been here for a while, we're here to pick each other up and help each other out freaking yeah see what it's all about yeah because there like, there is it is life-changing once you figure it out yeah that's what we're all that's what we're all here to do we all came here looking for a fucking better way you know yep and that better way doesn't involve stressing yourself out and that better way doesn't involve living in the dark with frustration because like the whole the whole way that we that you know you start bringing me through this over the last few months was that back in in march at the end of March, I was like, I, I messaged you and I was like, yo, I had a bad month. And I remember like, I was like, man, I don't want to tell anyone about this. And, but then I was like, well, I'll, I'll tell Semper. And then I was like, yo, man, I'm had a bad month. I'm going to trade Sim in April. And like, and then soon after that, or maybe in the same conversation, you're like, or we could do this. <laughs> and like, you know, that's what the last three months have been. Yeah. Cause I, I've seen you grow from like, non-confident you know like back to sim trading and i've been there trust me yeah um uh, i don't know if you've had the 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 opportunity to blow up an account or at least as many as i i did but i guess that's just the type of trader it, it, i'm a stubborn trader and it took a lot for me to figure that shit out well, I, I didn't like blow any, blow any up in, a, in like a very like, you know, explosive kind of way, but I've definitely bled a couple dry. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, like I said, I hope you continue going and and keep us updated. Um, oh, yeah. Hopefully we can work something out where somebody where we get a, a new trader like, hey, you want to go through this? We're going to hold your hand. We're going to walk you through the whole process how how kind of i would have liked to have been done yeah but you know we learn as we go and yeah i mean and we learn i honestly it helps me teaching you guys or giving you whatever i've picked up from brandon it helps me retain it and it helps it, the biggest part is it holds me accountable yeah um and like and and for me it's just like i've improved on all metrics like have you improved in this yes have you improved in that yes like have you improved psychology yes have you improved in like uh making your greens bigger than your reds yes have you improved in finding setups that you're lying yes like have you improved in like having rock solid rules that okay you know you're you're still tightening up and and abiding by but it's just like yes and um and so it, th- this has been a golden opportunity. So I got I got to thank you and also thank thank the group because it's been really cool. And I, I feel I'm just in like a much better place, you know. And um, sure. it's I, I you know it's the, the improvement is obvious. Yeah, definitely. And thank you for sharing or being vulnerable to us, dude. Because it takes a lot. A lot of people are shy of sharing their reds or sharing whatever they're going through, but. It's kind of like AA. I mean, you know, you got to admit that you have an issue. Yeah. Before you can get help, and we're we're here to help. Yeah. Um. So reach out to me, Lasagna Cat. He's picking this up pretty good. The moving average plays um are there. Fit plays are there. Running out of time. Probably gonna not let me record past there. So we'll probably post another video of the recaps. Um. But yeah, be on the lookout for Lazayaka. He's going to fucking kill it. See you guys. Have a great weekend. Have a good one, fellas.